So I've done this intro about 10 or 15 different times and well, they all kind of suck. So let's just roll with this one. This is the Vinstar T7900. No, they did not send this to me. I probably Vinstar doesn't even know who I am, which is might be a good thing because sometimes, eh, well, you can get the glare off of there, Travis. But it's a cool little thermostat. I know we've done a bunch of different things on actual temperature monitoring. Well, let's do our own temperature stuff. Everybody pretty much needs a thermostat, right? Well, this one has local API and we'll even do some cool MQTT goodness stuff with this one as well. So let's check it out. So on the Vinstar Color Touch, and they do have several different models. This just happens to be the one with the color screen. And they do have a little smaller model that has a just regular LCD screen, just a little more dumbed down, but it still has the local API. I went with this one for more of that wife acceptance factor instead of looking at that old school kind of just LCD display. But if it had been just me, I would probably would have went with just that regular one. So this one does have a touch screen and no, we won't go over all the stuff in the box itself. The box is kind of boring. Let's focus on the thermostat itself. So it's pretty much a no frills thermostat. We'll get to the display later. Don't worry. I'll power this thing up. There aren't any switches or anything on the unit itself. It's pretty clean. There is little holes for just some airflow and there is a SD card slot and that's a full SD card and for size relations of things. I know everybody knows what an SD card size is, so we'll throw that there. And the SD card slot, that's for loading your custom wallpapers on here, as well as you can do firmware upgrades. Now on the back of the unit itself, there is three little dip switches and kids, yeah, these are what we used to have to change on our motherboards when we change processors and options, we had to get out the book and we had to change all these little jumpers and well, I guess dip switches or maybe were before or after, I don't remember. But anyway, the settings for that are in the manual for changing the heat pump settings and whether you have gas or electric and this thermostat is very, very flexible on all the different things you can do in various setups. So you will notice there's no battery option. It's simply going to use up too much power and it would drain all your batteries. And it's not going to have that four wire option like you see with the Nest or some other ones that have an onboard battery that just sip on power. This will require that C wire, or you can do the add a wire option that you can get with this to add another wire to your system. If you only have four in the wall, because I know it can be a pain in some places to run additional thermostat wire. This is the faceplate that you do mount to the wall itself. And yeah, I didn't know if that was a particular serial number. I didn't anybody claim in my warranty, but you can see they do have all the different terminals at the bottom, as well as you'll notice an extra one. It says sensor. Well, what's this sensor thing about? Well, that's one of the additional features that I really liked about this. Say for instance, the, you don't like the temperature sensor being on the unit itself. Well, you can buy a wireless one, kind of like the Echo B, but you can also buy a wired sensor. And it is a very long wire that you get whenever, if you're gonna buy this from them. And it's just a simple little two wire sensor that changes resistance based on the temperature. And the very cool part is they even give you the temperature and then the resistance in Ohm's chart. So maybe if somebody knows a thermistor that runs this range you could just make your own or if you're already thinking about it you could make something let's say some sort of esp module or something that changes resistance and then you could feed in your own sensor option that's pretty cool 
I like that they did this chart right here for you so you could do whatever you wanted with it. And this is just in that little air temperature sensor. It tells you like some of the instructions and warnings of stuff to don't do. But we, we'll just figure that out later. Then your typical hookups that you have on here. And then of course this just rotates in here and snaps down in it. Pretty cool looking thermostat. And I do like all the features on it so far, but let's dig into it and we'll get this puppy installed. So the one thing I've been meaning to do for a while is actually get rid of my Nest thermostat. And you probably go, wait, wait, isn't Nest one of the best thermostats out there? Well, actually, no. I'm going to say they make you jump through a bunch of hoops and then they even close this off from doing any type of local control or being able to control it outside of the Google cloud thing or whatever. And then we had to pay to get in there and it just... Ah, mind boggle. Uh, I'm not gonna, I don't want to do it. Why can't I just have a thermostat that I can go turn something on and then hit the web page on it? Even maybe, hopefully, it would have MQTT or some type of way to get data to and from without having to use the internet. I mean, that's what we do. We want local control stuff and we want to own our own products, right? Well, that's when I ran into Vinstar, and they do have several different models that do support a cool little local API. Plus, even there's a little cool little Docker container that you can grab all kind of sensor data out of it with MQTT. So I know a lot of you are going to be Home Assistant users, and well, I would stick to one of the three models that are currently supported by the built-in integration for this thermostat because it just really makes it rather simple. Now the model I went with was the T7900 just because it had a few more different features to it and had the touch screen and well it just made that WAF a little bit easier when we switched thermostats. Now, of course the T2000 is a little bit cheaper Currently, as of the recording in this video, they're around $100. Now, that could go up or go down. Of course, prices are subject always to change. And then the T7900, $175 ish. Of course, there are some other models. I just don't know if they have the Wi Fi and the local API. You will need to do your own research before you buy one of those other models. And of course, we'll leave all the links down below where you can get yours. They are affiliate links, but they don't bring any additional cost to you. But we will get a small commission. We do appreciate it. Now, instead of like a lot of YouTube channels that want to hide the issues at the end, well, we're going to be straight up front. I did find that this thermostat had a bit of self-heating issues. And you can find that in some of the comments and reviews on Amazon or whatever marketplace you may use. But... Right off the bat, I really didn't have that issue myself because I wanted to move the temperature sensor down the hallway. And this has the cool option of throwing in a wired sensor for that. And you can do some Wi-Fi ones and different ones. And you can have it average all the sensors. You can put a bunch of wired sensors and average those. It's pretty easy and pretty flexible. So if you do have that issue, you can just get you a different sensor and just call it a day. And because I didn't like my location of where my thermostat is at, it's just right next to the air return or the intake, whatever you want to call it. And it causes too much of a swing with temperatures. I prefer the sensor to be back by the bedrooms. So other than that, that's the only issue I've really seen with this thermostat. Other than that, it really works great, especially that local API. For Home Assistant users, it's really simple to put this into Home Assistant. You do need to make sure and enable the local API on the thermostat itself. Otherwise, you just won't be able to control it. 
And we'll leave the link to this page because things could change. Maybe things could get even better for the climate control. So it's pretty much this simple to put the thermostat in Home Assistant itself. Yes, currently at this time, you will need to edit your configuration YAML and you really just need to put in three lines. If you don't have a climate section yet, platform bin star host, and that's the IP address. Use a static IP or a reserve static and that way that IP address won't change. If you did set a username or password, you know we need to put that in as well as a pin. It's that simple, put it in, restart it, boom, it's in there. So pretty much after that, you can throw in your card and you can control it right in Home Assistant and you can get all your history and whatever it might be for the thermostat itself. It's that simple. Now, if you do want to use MQTT with the thermostat and it does work very well and it does expose a bunch of different sensors that Home Assistant doesn't have is there's a cool little project and I'll leave the link down below. Of course, it's a little Docker container that it's the MQTT Vinstar bridge and pretty much all it does it allows you to push stuff to the actual thermostat and then as well as read it all using MQTT. It's pretty simple to set up. And they do give you a bunch of different examples. And there's even a little Docker Compose file. And I am working on the Unraid users. I'm going to have a template out there where you can just go in and install the Vinstar to MQTT Docker container just with a couple clicks. Put in your stuff and boom, you're good to go. And it exposes quite a bit. You get everything from the run times, you get your fan states, the cool temp, you get your temperature of all your different sensors, your targets, the thermostat, it's all kinds of goodness. You can do all with reading things and you can put those into Home Assistant as well and do what you want with them. Quite awesome to have MQTT on a thermostat. Maybe we'll bug Vinstar, Let's put MQTT inside the thermostat itself. So if you do opt in and you do want to allow the cloud control, which I really don't have a problem with, if, if we can use a local API and then opt into a cloud, I'm perfectly okay with that because it's going to fit pretty much everybody. Do you just want to use the cloud? Perfect. Do you want to just use local API? Perfect. Hey, what about I want to use both? There you go, it fits everybody, same product. I don't get why manufacturers don't understand this. Luckily, Vinstar does. Yeah, off my soapbox. Now on Vinstar's website, you can go see all your runtime graphs, which of course, because of the time, I don't have anything running this day. And you can go through and change the fan. You can even send messages to the thermostat, which is kind of cool. It pops up a big gray box on it. You can change whatever you want with it. You can even come in here and I do find it a little easier than standing in the hallway like a schleb and saying, oh, let me pick the schedule. You can go do all the scheduling of everything right here in the little website. It's pretty cool. You can do all the settings, everything I've talked about from the dead bands, the vacation stuff, the sounds, the themes, the auxiliary outputs. The sensor settings, this is where you say, hey, I want to do a single wireless or I want to average or wired and therm there's all kinds of settings you can go in here and change. Now, of course, these are all available on the thermostat itself, but hey, it's pretty cool. You don't have to stand there and mess with the thermostat. You can do this all right here from your computer on the web. And of course, you can do it from pretty much anywhere in the world as well. Now they do also have the Android and I believe the iOS app. You can do a lot of the same stuff, but I did find some of the settings were not there, possibly hidden, but it does give you enough where you can go in and go change and control your thermostat through their cloud if you're not doing the home assistant thing and whatever. So it gives you multiple options, it's pretty cool. If you wanna do the cheesy thing of doing your own little custom backgrounds like I did, and yeah, I was determined to do this. It's not very straightforward, but I'll show you a couple tips. It makes it really simple. There's one key setting that you need to go choose to get them on your thermostat. Now the documentation, they say to use a two to eight gig SD card. I luckily had an eight gig around. You can use the little micro SD to full size SD adapters as well, but do format that as FAT32. 
then it allows you to do all of the cool stuff and you can put whatever you want on there. You can even do little screen savers that go through and it changes after a time of inactivity and it won't have all the text on it. It actually will just change pictures. So it's a cool little digital display in your home that doubles up. Pretty cool stuff. And of course, you can put whatever stupid things you want up here just like I did. And yeah, maybe people will think twice about changing the thermostat, maybe, I don't know. Now to put your own little custom backgrounds or upgrade the firmware, whatever it might be on the thermostat itself, you need to go over to Vinstar's website and download the desktop app. They do have it currently for Mac OS and Windows. Yeah, sorry Linux, but well, just find another machine, right? Go ahead and install it and then open it and it will pull this up showing the current firmware. But we don't want to mess with that right now. We're going to click on pictures. And if you go into here, you can make several different albums. Now, once you do add another picture in there, it does give you the option of really being able to see it on the thermostat itself. You can rotate, you can fill it, reset, whatever you want to do. And then just hit done. It adds it. And well, I don't know how many pictures you can add, but hey, maybe let us know down in the comments down below. And then you'll just hit export album to SD card pick your SD card, and then you go ahead and pick your model number and it will export it straight to it. Then you go take the SD card and slot it in the side of the thermostat. And then once you get to the thermostat itself, that's where the key change happens. It's not really straightforward. You need to go into settings on the thermostat itself and then go to SD card and then import settings from SD card. And I know it sounds confusing, but you're just going to be importing pictures. Then when you hit import settings, I just selected the custom images and let it import. And then when you go back to preferences and then you can pick your own custom image and what you want to use. And that's it. Pretty simple. If you know the little steps. But that's what we're here for. So all in all, pretty cool little thermostat. And well, I will leave the links down below for the affiliate links of where you can get your thermostat. Or if you just want to purchase something else, it does help things out. And we do get a small commission with no additional cost to you. I do appreciate it. So this has definitely changed a lot of stuff for us in the home because, well, the little echo mode or whatever it may have been that automatically did things based on who was in the home and sometimes just didn't work if we were sleeping in or whatever. Well, since we're always basing this off of automations with our alarm system, it definitely knows if someone's home or not. Or it can also base it off of those presence sensors and Home Assistant itself. If you're doing something cool with that, definitely let us know down in the comments down below. If there are some other thermostats that have a true local API, definitely let us know as well. I'd like to check those out. Oh, we're doing the outro. So hats off to all the Patreon subscribers. I do thank you. It helps bring new projects to the video a channel or something. All the and you know the drill, smash one of those buttons down below, whether it be thumbs up, thumbs down, and hit that subscribe button, and y'all take care.